Welcome to a video that will show how to use a table of common Taylor and Maclaurin series to determine additional formulas for Taylor and Maclaurin series. The list we see here of power series is pretty common in most textbooks, but what we can do is take these formulas and use them to find additional formulas for power series. For example, if we want to determine the power series for f of x equals cosine x squared, we can use the formula for cosine x. It's a pretty straightforward process. Wherever we see x in this formula, we're going to replace it with x squared. So we'll still have negative one to the nth. And here we'll have x squared to the power of two n divided by two n factorial. Let's go ahead and simplify this one more time. Remember when we have a power raised to a power, we multiply the exponents. This will be x to the four n divided by two n factorial. Let's go ahead and generate some of the terms in this power series. So when n is zero, we'll have negative one to the zero, that's gonna be one, x to the zero, which will be one, and then we'll have zero factorial in the denominator, that's gonna give us one. When n is equal to one, we'll have negative one times x to the fourth divided by two factorial. Plus, when n is two, we'll have positive one x to the eighth divided by four factorial. Plus, when n is three, this will be negative one x to the twelfth and this will be six factorial, and so on. Let's just go ahead and simplify this one more time. We'll have cosine x squared is equal to one minus x to the fourth over two factorial plus x to the eighth divided by four factorial minus x to the twelfth divided by six factorial, and so on. And there we have it. Let's go and take a look at one more basic one, then we'll take a look at a couple that are more challenging. We want to determine the power series for f of x equals e to the two x, and we're already given the power series for e to the x. So again, wherever we see x, we'll replace it with two x. So we'll have two x to the n divided by n factorial. So to find the first several terms of this power series, we could use this formula here, or we could just replace x with two x in the expanded form of the power series as we see here. Let's go ahead and try that one this way. So we'll have one plus, instead of x, we'll have two x, plus now we'll have two x squared instead of x, divided by two factorial, plus two x to the third, divided by three factorial plus two x to the fourth and so on. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. We'll have one plus two x. This will be four x squared divided by two factorial plus this would be eight x cubed divided by three factorial this would be 16x to the fourth divided by four factorial and so on. Now we could simplify these fractions here, but we'll go ahead and stop there. Let's take a look at a couple that are a little more involved. Here we want to determine the power series for f of x equals e to the x sine x. Well, we have a power series for e to the x and we have a power series for sine x. So if we multiply these two power series, we'll have the power series for the given function. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna multiply the first several terms of this power series times the first several terms of this power series. Now because there's an infinite number of terms in each of these power series, we're gonna to try to multiply these so that we have the same degree terms next to each other. 
there's only going to be one degree, one term. That would be one times x. There will also only be one x squared term. We'll have x times x. Now it gets a little more interesting. We have to figure out what products would have degree three. Well, if we multiply this one by negative x cubed divided by three factorial, that would be negative x cubed divided by three factorial. But we'd also have a degree three term if we multiply x squared divided by two factorial times x. So that'd be plus x cubed divided by two factorial. So there's two degree three terms in this power series. Now let's see if we can determine the products for the degree four terms. We could multiply x times negative x cubed divided by three factorial. So we'd have minus x to the fourth divided by three factorial. And we could also multiply this degree three term by the x. So we'd have plus x to the fourth divided by three factorial. Now we'll find the products that have degree five. So we can multiply this degree two term by this degree three term. We'd have negative x to the fifth divided by two factorial, three factorial. We could also multiply this one by x to the fifth divided by five factorial. And I think there's gonna be one more term. We can multiply this degree four term times this degree one term. So we'd have plus x to the fifth divided by four factorial. And we can move on to the degree six terms, but we'll stop here. Let's go ahead and group the terms that have the same degree. These have degree three, these have degree four, and these have degree five. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We'll have e to the x sine x would equal x plus x squared. This is gonna be negative x to the third over six plus x to the third over two. That's gonna to simplify to one third x cubed or x cubed divided by three. Now these two terms are opposite, so they cancel out. And to combine the degree five terms, you would have to multiply these denominators out and then get a common denominator. And this would come out to a negative x to the fifth all over 30. And of course, this would continue indefinitely. But we're going to go ahead and stop here. If we needed more terms, we would have to continue what we were doing above here by trying to find the products that have the same degree. That's going to have to do it for this video. We'll take a look at one more problem in part two.